All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street School. is coming with the Day 17 Training Camp Breakdown, August 17th, as in Wednesday. Man, a lot went down today. Most notably, Antonio Gibson not only working in special teams as like a punt blocker, but today he was a returner, punt returner and kick returner. Of course, we got to break that down and as to why he's even taking those reps in practice. And people forget when he was in Memphis, when he played for Memphis in college, he was one of the best returners in that draft class. Don't forget that. But there's also a mix of the fact that Ron Rivera is sending a message as well. And we got to get into all of that. We got to get into Jahan Dotson having an amazing day. Cam Sims having an amazing day. Carson Wentz having a really good bounce back day and then a lot of really important press conference quotes from Rivera, Jack DeRio and Bobby McCain. Some really notable things that all three of those guys said. And of course I got to give y'all all of the injury updates both good and bad. And y'all know with every one of these training camp video breakdowns where I do daily breakdowns of every practice that ever happens. Of course I come out with my highlights and press conference interview clips earlier in the day and then at night I break it all down. We start with the quarterbacks going all the way through the offense position group opposition group then we start with the defensive line and go all the way through the entire defense then we go with special teams and any other randomness that went down that i feel like y'all should know but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every friday to the broadcast podcast where we talk about everything funny going on whether it's sports music anime gaming whatever we just let it break stuff down and analyze and laugh also make sure you pull up every Sunday for the call-in show where I open up the phone lines every Sunday at 6 p.m. for y'all to call in, voice y'all opinions good or bad about the commanders and ask whatever questions you may have as well. Without further ado, let's get it. All right, so first of all, today for practice, as in August 17th, even though hopefully this video comes out before 12 a.m. so that when I say today, it makes sense, Taylor Heineke was the first person on the field. Again, it was always Jaquez Ezzard. Then he was waived with an injury designation. And basically every day since then has been Taylor Heineke who's been the first one on the field. And then injury-wise, Andrew Norwell was on the sideline along with Wes Schweitzer. Wes Schweitzer got hurt yesterday in practice with a hip injury. And Andrew Norwell hasn't practiced since the Saturday preseason game against the Panthers. So the commanders are currently without their top three guards right now. Trey Turner still dealing with his quad. He didn't play at the Saturday Panthers game. Andrew Norwell did play the entire time that the starters were out there with the Panthers. But he hasn't practiced since. It was initially reported that it was a Veterans Day off on Monday, but then since then, we still haven't seen him, and he's been, he was on the side field today. And then Wes Schweitzer dealing with the hip injury that he suffered yesterday was working on the side field as well, like I just mentioned. And then also, now Curtis Hodges is on the side field. So you have Logan Thomas on pup list, John Bates on the side field, Cole Turner on the side field dealing with his hamstring injury, and then now you have Curtis Hodges on the side field, along with Samus Reyes, who's on IR, so literally our only two healthy tight ends in practice today were Armani Rogers and Eli Wolf, which is really interesting because those are two guys that of course I'm associated with Eli Wolf being a former Georgia Bulldog, but I'm not high on him. I don't think he'll make the team. I think he's just a camp body. And then Armani Rogers has been the guy I've been rooting for even before we picked him up as an undrafted free agent. Y'all saw my reaction when we got him as an undrafted free agent. I was super excited. I've been heavy on him even before he joined the team. And then the fact that he went out there with the starters against the Panthers and was getting targets like he was man y'all don't understand i'm telling y'all he has the potential to be another darren waller i'm gonna keep saying it so with cole turner john bates and curtis hodges working on the side field again literally armani rogers and eli wolf were our only healthy tight ends in practice today that was it so first team second team third team all of them we only had two tight ends so them boys got work now moving on to the quarterbacks uh, most notably, Carson Wentz dropped a beautiful dime to Jahan Dotson. It was like a 45-yard touchdown bomb that went well into the end zone. And you can say it may have been slightly overthrown, but Jahan Dotson reached out to get it, and I'll take that. I'll take it to where Carson Wentz throws it to where only the receiver can make a play. You allow these receivers to make plays. That's what they want, and he made a play. That's why they prefer that. That's why I prefer that. And that was one of Carson Wentz's best deep ball plays of training camp, though. Again, it was 
wasn't the most accurate, but again, he laid it out there to where only Jahan Dotson could get it. If Jahan Dotson didn't get it, it would be incomplete, and that's it. And so I prefer for him to overthrow it like he did to Jahan Dotson today, and Jahan Dotson was able to find another gear to be able to reach out to get it rather than that underthrow he had towards Terry McLaurin in the Panthers preseason game where he underthrew it so bad Terry McLaurin had to try to come back and make a ridiculous catch to get it and he wasn't able to of course because first of all it was passing interference on the play that wasn't called and then also he had a really nice sidearm zip to Deami Brown a little bit later on a slant and then Cam Sims had a really good day today and Carson Wentz was the majority of it I mean he was out there making crazy touchdown catches left and right especially in two minute drills so man Carson Wentz had a really good day today yesterday I wouldn't say he had a bad day he had a bad period he started off really good and then in the middle incompletions and then an interception then again like I explained last night in the video about what happened yesterday he went to the side with all of the starting receivers they talked it out and then they came back killing it for the rest of practice and he continued that momentum going into this practice and then running back wise like I said, man, Antonio Gibson out there, punt returner and kick returner in practice. And so, like I said, I think it's also Ron Rivera sending a message that Antonio Gibson, you're no longer running back one undisputed. You and Brian Robinson are probably dead even right now, but who's going to end up being running back one? I don't think Brian Robinson has necessarily surpassed them just yet on the depth chart, but they're about even. It's an open competition for sure at this point. If it wasn't before, it definitely is now. And you cannot forget that Brian Robinson never fumbled in college. 545 carries, 52 catches, and not one fumble like that's ridiculous bro and with your biggest weakness being fumbling there's a reason we drafted brian robinson with his ability to never fumble the ball he's on your heels you are definitely on the hot seat i'm hoping ultimately brian robinson's mark ingram and antonio gibson's alvin kamara which is kind of an interesting connection now that i think about it both of those guys are from the atlanta atlanta metro area so that kind of works out and brian robinson went to alabama just like mark ingram went to alabama so i think that's actually a really interesting parallel right there even more than I thought initially until just now when I thought about the Atlanta and the Alabama connection. And then receiver-wise, like I mentioned earlier, Jahan Dotson with the beautiful 45-yard deep bomb play from Carson Wentz reached out to get it. It was a really good throw by Carson Wentz, but it was just a better catch by Jahan Dotson. And if you haven't seen it, here you go. I mean, that play was amazing. I would have preferred a better angle, but I'll take it. That was beautiful. And like I said earlier, Cam Sims had a really good day. I mean, it even started in individual drills where he was reaching out and making really good catches with no defenders around him. And then he had that one really good catch from Taylor Heineke in the corner of the end zone, the two minute drills. And that's literally what ended camp. Like after that touchdown, they were like, all right, we'll end it here. That's a great high note to end it on. And so of course, I'm really interested in seeing if we're actually gonna see some Cam Sims against the Chiefs. He like didn't get a single target. I'm not even sure if he played any offensive of snaps against the Panthers on Saturday and y'all know how this goes man every year Cam Sims is making plays November and December but every year we restart and he just doesn't get the ball thrown towards him until November for some reason hopefully we can start to see him utilize more but we'll see and then speaking of utilized in the Panthers game the man Jahan Dotson was out there more than any other receiver on the team at least out of the starters he literally was out there for every snap that Carson Wentz was out there 22 of them and so it's just amazing that he never got the ball and technically wasn't targeted and so i'm also really interested in seeing what Jahan dawson's gonna do against the chiefs are we gonna unleash him because he's been making play after play all offseason even in training camp touchdown after touchdown like you already just saw that clip i just showed you i want to see him utilized against the chiefs because even if you go look at the panthers game he was open at times so it was really interesting that we did not utilize him more in that game and then also before we move on from the receivers here's the cam sims catch as well if you were interested i mean a super contested to catch in the end zone. And then also, 
before we move on from the receivers mark and michelle had a really good day today as well and there's an apparent connection an obvious connection between taylor heineke and mark and michelle and he's definitely fighting for one of those last receiver spots he doesn't contribute much on special teams but he's arguably leading our team in touchdowns out of all of the receivers i know he's at least top three out of all of our receivers in training camp so far he's been balling and then tight end wise like i mentioned earlier armani rogers and eli wolf were the only healthy tight ends we had available today i don't think anybody's like seriously hurt but i just think they're being overly cautious with everybody even logan thomas like i've said before i feel like honestly if there were a super bowl tomorrow and we needed everybody to play i think everybody maybe even logan thomas could play tomorrow i think chase young is the only one that like literally couldn't play a game tomorrow everybody else all of these guys cole turner with the hamstring injury all of this they're just being overly cautious i think with cole turner specifically though i think it's somewhat like a terry mccorn rookie season situation where i mean granted he is dealing with a hamstring issue but i think they're also trying to hide him they don't want teams knowing how great he is and showcasing them in the preseason under the bright lights for everybody to know. You would have to watch my coverage of training camp to really know what Cole Turner's been doing or any of the other Burgundy and Gold media or reporters and things like that. They don't want other teams knowing that Cole Turner's that guy, especially showing it in the preseason game. So I think they're putting them on ice probably 30% because of hamstring. I think the other 70% is because they're trying to hide them just like with Terry McLaurin. They've seen enough. They know what he can do. No use in putting them out there to risk further injury then offensive line wise like i said we went without our top three guards trey turner andrew norwell and west swites were on the side field and so because we're so low on guards you had charles leno at left tackle cornelius lucas had to step up at right tackle because samuel cosme had to move from right tackle to right guard because we're literally that short on guards so with the starting team you had charles leno at left tackle sadiq charles at left guard i think tyler larson at center samuel cosme at right guard and then Cornelius Lucas at right tackle. Thank goodness we got Cornelius Lucas back. We just got him back a couple of days ago. If we didn't have him back, it would be another guy further on the depth chart being brought up to start. And then that just makes fourth stringers have to play with the second stringers and so on and so forth all the way down to the third stringers. But Ron Rivera clarified that Samuel Cosme is not at guard because we're trying to see him at guard. He is our future franchise right tackle. And right now he's only there at guard because we just need him to be. And of course he can be an elite guard because he's really strong he's literally built to be an elite guard he would probably be a better guard than tackle but he's also really good at tackle as we've seen and so you prefer him at the higher more premium position and then also when everybody's healthy we have plenty of guards we have more quality guards than we have tackles it's just sad right now that a lot of our guards are hurt now moving to the defense defensive line wise of course with chase young still out and we don't know when he'll be back it may be week two week three week four or even later than that we're digging deep to look at our defensive line and especially our edge rushers and right now Jay Smith Williams is a starter and Casey Tuhill is right behind him and Rivera even talked about it he said quote we're trying to sort through and see which one of those guys has stepped up unquote he also spoke about how William Bradley King has done a really good job swatting a pass from Taylor Heineke today back into his face he also talked about Boomy Rutimi and he specifically said that Shaka Tony he has a really unique skill set and the fact that he can basically be a situational pass rusher that can explode off of the line you saw what he did against the Panthers granted he ended the play terribly by ripping off Matt Corral's helmet but if without that that would have been an excellent pass rush snap and that's something that he uniquely brings to the team and going back to Boomy Rutimi he basically talked about that he's a heavy-handed guy so when you need some strength that's who you bring in there as far as depth goes and then Rivera also loves F.A. Obata a former Carolina Panther that's a freak athlete just still working through technique he's pretty raw but once he gets all of that down he's excellent depth as well and they feel like he can also play some defensive tackle three technique and passing situations when they need him to be so he's also really versatile and remember James Smith Williams the guy that's basically starting in place of Chase Young until Chase Young gets back he's also a guy that can play edge rusher or three tech whenever you need a defensive tackle if you need like a you can do a smaller one in obvious passing situations and then Jack Dorio spoke on the firing of Sam Mills he said quote I'd have to defer the coach on the reasoning unquote but he did also talk about Jeff Zganina and he talked about how he brings a lot of energy and a lot of experience as a new defensive lines coach because remember he's played in the NFL for 17 seasons and Chase Young even spoke about it he's saying it's noticeable that he's played for 17 years in the NFL he knows the game and he said quote is different when you played it unquote so Chase Young highly values having a defensive lines coach that has played in the NFL for a long time Sam Mills the third I don't think played a 
single game in the NFL. And Chase Young is making it known that it's fairly obvious that there's a difference between the two. Also, Del Rio's comments on the linebacker group moving to the linebackers, Del Rio said that Holcomb has been great as a leader and a mentor. Spoke of him very highly. If, if you want to see him talk about it in greater detail, you can go check out the press conferences from this evening. Jack Del Rio also spoke about Jamin Davis and said that he's been locked in on improving from his rookie season. And he said that the unit will need him to play very well this season, but he loves where Jamin Davis is at so far. Remember, yesterday is in Tuesday, August 16th, the 16th day of training camp. Jamin Davis had probably his best practice of his career of playing for the Burgundy and Gold so far. He was everywhere. Coverage, run defense, everything. And remember, keep telling y'all this, in that preseason game against the Panthers, he stepped up really well in a couple of run plays that we never saw him do anything like that last year. So we've already seen some improvement. I want to see a lot of consistency out of him. But the fact that he's trending upwards is great, and Jack DeRio is very high on him. It's still really interesting, though, that our head coach and our defensive coordinator are ex-linebackers, and our linebacker position is the one with the most questions. But we'll see. Then defensive back-wise, while Rivera was addressing the media, he said that Benjamin St. Juice has adjusted very well to his new position. He's a bright player who has a good grasp of the concepts, and he also talked highly of his agility and his short area quickness and things like that, and that will help him succeed in the slot. And remember, Benjamin St. Juice did not play in that Panthers preseason game, but he was practicing immediately on Monday, fully healthy, full pads, everything, and he's been practicing since. I'm still not sure why he didn't play in the Panthers game, but he looks good to go. Also, Bobby McCain talking about a lot of the young DBs. He said Percy Butler specifically has never made the same mistake twice. And remember, that's the same thing Rivera said about Cameron Curl before a lot of us knew how great Cameron Curl would be. Some people were heavy on Cameron Curl before we even drafted him and remember during that offseason everybody was hearing Ron Rivera talk highly of Cameron Curl and hyping him up and of course it was hard to believe because he was a seventh round pick so we were like we gotta see and now look at Cameron Curl and so Bobby McCain used the same exact language when describing Percy Butler never makes the same mistake twice and the interesting thing about Percy Butler is that if he can be just as smart and aware and have as high of an IQ as Cameron Curl, he's going to be ridiculous because he's definitely a far better athlete. He's way quicker, way faster. Cameron Curl's so great because he's so smart. If Percy Butler can even become half of as smart as Cameron Curl is football-wise, it's over with for the league, honestly. Bob McCain also talking about Percy Butler says that it's good to play fast and make mistakes in practice, get them out of the way in practice, as long as you learn from it and fix it. And Bob McCain says that Percy Butler has been doing just that. McCain also spoke highly of Jeremy Reed said he's one of the smartest players in the secondary and makes the most of his opportunities and now special teams wise this is where we get to Antonio Gibson got to talk about it well again like I mentioned earlier Antonio Gibson first started pre-practice taking some punt returns and then everybody was like uh-oh punt returns and then at some point when they started doing kick return drills he was out there with Alex Erickson Carrick McGowan and Dax Milne and so that was really like oh man punt return is one thing but kick return is crazy like that's a whole nother level but Rivera after practice in his press conference said that Gibson returned kicks in college and was explosive and took some reps today and Rivera also said that they're still looking at the position and the options there because remember after the Panthers preseason game the thing he was the most livid about he was you know a little disgruntled about the third down defense but he basically waved it off as like we're just gonna fix that we'll be all right but the special teams he was probably the most upset I've ever seen him in a press conference about a specific thing I mean he was not playing about that afterwards so again Antonio Gibson punt return kick returns it's a mix of yeah he fumbled and it's it, you know Rivera sending a message that your job is not safe so get out here and participate in these special teams because you need to earn your way back up the depth chart basically but on top of all of that we also do not have a certified returner which is another reason why I felt like we should have kept DeAndre Carter for at least another year but it's whatever we signed Alex Erickson to be that guy Dax Milne could potentially be that guy and Kyrick McGowan has a little bit potential to him and I like Matt Cole's potential but I highly doubt he makes the team he's really far back in the depth chart but Antonio Gibson is secretly I mean a lot of people forget he was a really good returner for coming out of Memphis and if we compare everybody's college tape Dax Milne Alex Erickson and Antonio Gibson's he's easily the best punt returner coming out of college now granted Alex Erickson has been doing it a lot more in the NFL Antonio Gibson has done it none so far in the NFL so maybe Maybe that's why you can argue Alex Erickson is the better punt returner right now. But if we get Antonio Gibson back into it, and if we don't value him as high as
as a running back we feel like brian robinson can take over as the true running back one or at least like a half and half thing i feel like a lot of the reason that we haven't had antonio gibson at punt returns yet is because you don't want to put him out there and risk injury and now we had no other running backs it was jd mckissick and peyton barber but now that you have brian robinson that allows you to potentially have antonio gibson back there in punt returns with a straight face and not worry about him getting hurt as much of course you don't want him getting hurt but now if antonio gibson gets hurt whether running the ball special teams whatever you have brian robinson that can carry the load and literally be your every down back and so drafting Brian Robinson gives us some running back insurance and allows Antonio Gibson to do what he does best. And I, and that is returning punts and kicks. Ultimately, he could probably be the best punt and kick returner on this team. It's between him, Curtis Samuel, and Jahan Dotson. But Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel are too valuable as receivers to see them back there, if at all, very rarely. I think I can see Jahan Dotson probably doing it very rarely if we really need to play. But then again, if Antonio Gibson's your guy and with how explosive he is, he probably just take that over and we probably never see John Dotson back there. And again, all three of those guys, I would take all three of them. If health were not included, I would take Antonio Gibson, John Dotson, and Curtis Samuel over Dax Milne and Alex Erickson any day. But again, for health reasons and not putting people in bad situations to potentially get hurt, that's why you have Alex Erickson and Dax Milne. But we'll see. Antonio Gibson, man, y'all can't forget, man, that man was averaging 28 yards per punt before he came out of the draft. He was literally one of the best punt returners in the nation coming out of his draft class. Back in Memphis 2019, he returned 23 kicks for 647 yards and a touchdown. Go look at the highlights, man. He's different. People forget that. So again, just to recap, it's like somewhat of a punishment from Rivera. Not even necessarily a punishment, but like a signal like your job is not safe. So you better show us something in the return game because right now Brian Robinson's coming for your neck. And then there's also the fact that, again, with as livid as Ron Rivera was about our special teams in that Panthers game, both special teams coverage and the return game, Antonio Gibson honestly has a good shot to actually being our primary punt returner, if he really wants to be. And then before we go, bunch of random important quotes as well. Rivera said he was very pleased with today's practice after yesterday's session, all of the extra hitting and extra aggressiveness and unnecessary stuff that was going on that he said that would have been flagged in regular games. Most notably one time when Sam Howell was taken down way too rough. And so Rivera was happier today, even just in the press conference alone, he just seemed happier than yesterday's press conference. But he did talk about how players were taking shots yesterday and last practice that would honestly get a lot of these people in trouble and penalties unnecessary roughnesses all of that type of stuff and he emphasized that he wants them to practice how they'll play because a lot of the times the way that you practice will come out and how you play on Sundays and if you keep practicing in a way that you would potentially get penalties in practice it's going to be really hard to just turn that off when you play in a game it's going to become second nature and then we're going to end up getting penalized left and right. We saw that last drive where we just couldn't get off the field and win against the Panthers in that preseason game. We got to stop that stuff. And also, Ron Rivera said, quote, yesterday was more about practicing smart. Unquote. He said that all of those shots, it just wasn't worth it. Penalties and just protecting your guys. You're going against teammates. Stop trying to hurt those guys. It's not that serious. And then Jack DeRio was asked about deleting his Twitter account, of course. This is his first press conference since. And he said he deleted it for personal reasons of course he's not going to speak about that and then when asked about the 100k fine he didn't want to speak on that really at all he said he's basically just focused on football and wants to move on also jack the spoke on the team's third down issues with that first drive especially against the panthers with the starters he said his reaction is not the overreact but he definitely wasn't happy about it and he intends to evaluate it and fix it and move on and he also said that they kind of identified some of the areas where they were making mistakes and they feel like it's all fixable del rio also said that the defense had a really productive offseason in his opinion he says that the communication is really strong now and that they even came into training camp with more confidence than they came into training camp with last offseason and then lastly bobby mccain talked about how exciting it's going to be to go starters versus starters against the chiefs for at least even a little while even if they don't play an entire quarter even if they don't play an entire half like i would like to see them do he's just really excited to see what they can do because even without tyree kill it's still pat mahomes and it's still a really good receiving core i mean they drafted I think they're the ones that drafted Sky Moore, right? And I've been hearing about him balling out in camp. 
maybe not to the extent of a Jahan Dotson, and maybe not to the point that he's going to replace a Tyreek Hill, but they have weapons. Don't forget, they also signed Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, that's a really interesting team. That's kind of crazy that Pat Mahomes' brother and Juju Smith-Schuster are now basically on the same team. That's weird. That team is going to be so annoying and hard to root for as long as they're always in the camera. I love the Chiefs players. I love a lot of their players, but boy, do not keep putting them on the screen. So, the Chiefs offense is probably still going to be top five and no joke, so I'm really excited to see what they look like third down specifically on defense against the Chiefs while the starters are out there. And of course, I'm just excited to go starter for starter with the Wentz and the guys and just really just see our starters as much as possible. I can't wait for the regular season to see our starters playing all of the time. I'm super excited. But of course, there's a lot of backups I'm really interested in. And with all of the injuries that we have, there's going to be a lot of backups out there playing against the Chiefs starters. So I'm excited to see how they contribute both defense and offense, especially on offense, guard, offensive line and tight end. Right now, Armani Rogers and Eli Wolf are our only basically fully healthy tight ends. So I'm pretty sure Armani Rogers is going to be out there a lot with the starters again. And I'm so excited. Y'all know that's my guy. God, man but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video especially antonio gibson returning punts and kicks why do you think that's happening do you think it's because ron rivera honestly wants another punt returner back there a more explosive guy after the disappointing special teams performance against the panthers or is it a punishment or like how i feel it's a little bit of both and a message to send to antonio gibson and then also please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out